Hello, I'm John Dorrance. I recently got hold of the new Raspberry Pi Debug Pro. I thought quite hard about buying this, even at the 12 quid. I already had a really good development setup, but having read about the Debug Probe, I got a little bit confused, particularly about things like the connectors that were on the device. So I really wanted to get hold of one so that I could see what it is, uh, who it's designed for, and whether it would actually help me or some of the um, some of the people I train and teach. In this video, I want to review this product and possibly my own assessment of where it adds value. This will be targeted at Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W, though you can of course use this device more widely. I'll be answering some of my own questions and confusions as I go. The sponsor for this video is PCBWay. PCBWay are your go-to solution for PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding, all your maker needs. So when I'm designing my Pico project boards, I can upload them and get quality PCBs produced by PCBWay, then delivered to me in just a few days. You've seen me use them for PCBs for my projects, such as video turntable project, a project I'm still using in production of videos like this one. So go check out PCB Way. The debug probe is really here to help us with two things. Flashing the Pico or Pico W, i.e. copying our binary code onto the Pico and storing it within the Pico's flash memory, ready to run. And debugging the Pico or Pico W. Normally in C or C++ programming environments, we think of this as running GDB as a debugger and against our code so that we can see the value of variables and stretch through the execution of parts of it. Actually, I think that correctly, the debug probe is targeting a wider part of the test and debug phase of our iterative cycle. As part of the testing phase, we often need telemetry rather than just an invasive debugging environment. I'll come back to this point. Like everyone, when you first get your Pico, that first flashing of code onto the device you do using the boot select approach. Using the device as a USB drive and copying the binary files onto the Pico. It requires us to apply power by holding down the boot select button. I have far too many thumbs to do this reliably without destroying my Pico. Without a reset button, I don't see boot select being very usable. And apparently I'm not the only one, as I stumbled across Pi Moroni's RP2040 product, which suggested that anyone not including a reset button along with their boot select button was a monster, which did make me smile. My pain with boot select quickly moved me onto using SWD, single wire debug, the Pico and Pico W have SWD ports separate from the GPIO. These take control of the device and flash the code onto the flash ROM. You can use a Raspberry Pi to be the other end of the wire and control the flashing process. I've used a Raspberry Pi 4 really successfully in this way since launch of the Pico. It does have its challenges sometimes. When the RPI is doing an auto software update, then it tends to be at a little busy to accurately manage the GPIO waggling needed for SWD protocol. I don't always know my Pi is doing an update and it therefore sometimes causes some frustration. Eventually that moved me on to using a Pico running Pico Pro as a dedicated USB device through which I can flash the Pico or Pico W. This is great as I can now complete the compile and deploy straight from my Mac without using the Raspberry Pi. I'm always slightly cautious about plugging my breadboards into the USB on my Mac, as there are a few more zeros on the cost of this than on the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm human, I sometimes make expensive mistakes. So that brings us to the launch of the Raspberry Pi Debug Probe. This is a RP2040 device that is designed as an off-the-shelf probe for flashing a Pico or Pico W. It doesn't run the same code as the Pico probe and requires slightly different steps in its usage. Physically, the debug probe 
has a USB cable to go to your host computer and then two JST SH ports. One of these is the SWD port and should be connected to the Pico or Pico W for flashing. The Debug Pro ships with three cables, a JST SH to JST SH cable, a JST SH to male DuPont, and a JST SH to female DuPont. The JST SH to JST SH gets talked about in the documentation as a cable to use for SWD. This concerned me for a while, as I don't currently use JST SH on my Picos, but instead just use header pins for the SWD port. Looking around, I could not easily find an JST SH that would fit on the through hole ports of the Pico or Pico W. It turns out that the JST SH to JST SH cable is really designed specifically for the Pico H and Pico WH. These are slightly modified layout boards so that they can have a surface mount JST SH connected put onto the board for SWD. For these boards, with pre soldered header pins, this becomes an easy way to connect up SWD as you can't get the plug in the wrong way round. But for those of us not using the pre header soldered Pico H's and Pico WH's, this cable is irrelevant. I connected the Pico debug to my Pico or Pico W using the JST SH to DuPont female cable and have male header pins soldered onto the Pico or Pico W. Of course, we need to be careful we're connecting the DuPont cable to the right pins. Unlike the JST SH end, this can go multiple ways around. As they have used separate connectors on each of the three wires, actually quite a lot of possibilities. Though as grounds always goes in the middle, there's only two ways around really. The JST SH does feel quite a lightweight connector. How this will hold up to me moving things around, plugging it into different environments, etc., we'll have to see. Still, buying replacement JSTSH cables is possible. There are a lot of comments online that the Pico Debug is just a Pico probe. In some respects, this is true, though interfacing to the Pico Debug is quite different. I've listed here the different open OCD commands to flash the Pico using the Raspberry Pi in bit bash mode using a Pico as Pico probe and using the debug probe. Notice that the debug probe uses the CMSYS DAB interface definition. This is not the same as the Pico probe and trying to use the Pico probe interface description won't work. The debug probe is also designed to help us with debugging. When you say the word debug, people often jump to thinking of debugging like GDB. The probe, of course, allows us to run GDB against our Pico or Pico W. So we can examine variables, register states, and step through the code. It also provides a telemetry route. So it converts serial UART from the GPIO pins to over USB into our host computer. GDB uses the SWD port to be able to interact with the running programs on the Pico. On my Mac, I have my IDE running, Eclipse in my case, which is providing me an interface to my code and the debugger. In the background, this then runs GDB to manage the debug session. GDB connects to OpenOCD to interface with the Pico via the debug probe. Once again, the options for OpenOCD are different between the different SWD approaches. If we're using the debug probe, then we are once again using the CMSYS DAB interface configuration. During the test cycle of an application, we often get the Pico to print out lots of information on what's going on within the program. So I might get a Pico W to print the IP address it's got from DHCP or the current state in an MQTT connection. These are telemetry data that we are printing. By and large, every project I've built, I've used produces some telemetry data and puts it out on serial over USB from the Pico. This ties up the USB interface on the Pico and it has an annoying lag while it connects each time the Pico restarts. Generally though, it has been my go-to approach for telemetry. I'm not terribly keen on plugging my Pico and breadboard directly into my Mac 
during the development cycle. I'm human and sometimes I do very stupid things. Shorting my Mac's USB does not sound like a good idea, so I connect my Pico to a Raspberry Pi via a power USB hub. This way, my Pico isn't connected to my Mac at all, and yet I can still test everything over SSH sessions. The debug probe brings me another option for separation. Not only is the USB port on the debug probe providing an SWD interface, it's also providing a serial over USB interface. This serial interface is broken out of another JST SH connector. This is really to be plugged into the default serial pins on the Pico. This is making the switch to telemetry on UART0 rather than over USB as it comes directly out of the Pico. I must say I like this capability of the Pico debug a lot. It opens up an easier route to two types of projects I've been thinking about. One, battery power project, where I want to test things, but I can't use a USB cable for telemetry as that would provide power too. Okay, yes, I could build a non-powered USB cable, but I said easier approach, not that there were not other ways around doing this. The other type of project this makes easier is where we wish to use the USB interface to actually communicate with our target system. I have some ideas on some micro ROS based projects where I plan on taking this approach. I have to wonder if the Raspberry Pi are nudging us towards a standard interfacing approach to the Pico and Pico W using SWD and telemetry on GPIO 0 and 1. It feels to me that this is what the debug probe has been set up for. Is this just to support C and C++ development, or will we see MicroPython support for the connection model via the debug probe? Overall, I think the debug probe is a great product if you're going down the no soldering route. You're using the Pico H or Pico WH and breadboards. You then have a straightforward and largely foolproof approach. It feels to me like it was designed for the education market. For those of us who are doing some soldering and more permanent projects, then I think the DGI probe still has some advantages in isolating our Pico and Pico W from our host computer to stop us accidentally frying our laptops. Yes, you could build a DIY version fairly easily using a Pico. The Pico probe code base isn't quite the same but it looks to me like you could run the debug probe firmware on a Pico or just enhance the Pico probe to give you the additional telemetry functions. This will always be cheaper, but then how much is your time worth? We're talking about seven or eight quid difference here. My only issue with the debug probe is the choice of the JST SH port. I feel these are just not as robust as I would have hoped for, and it's not something we can reproduce on a standard Pico. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts on the new Pico Pro. As always, please do subscribe to my channel, like the video, and make sure to push the notify bell to get notified of new content. Your likes encourage me to produce more.